Hey everybody, this is Gerald with Welding Classroom. I'm going to go over another little section of the AWS Book of Specifications for the Part B Practical Exam. Uh, this, you know, this is intended to help you get a little bit more familiar with the Book of Specifications. This is not a hands-on clinic for doing the inspections, using the tools, anything like that. You know what the assumption is, is you know how to use the tools that are uh, required for welding inspection, but sometimes it helps to get a little bit more familiar with the code or the standard that we're using. So this one that you'll see right here, there's some areas that are marked up that have some highlights in yellow. That's just a, uh, this is just one that I have that I've got some internal comments put in. Don't worry about them. So we're going to go ahead and review the table of contents real quick. You know, as a, as a person that uses the code book pretty regular, you should understand what all the chapters and clauses mean for sure. And knowing where they're at in relationship to each other can make it a little bit quicker navigating them. So one, the general requirements. Two, workmanship requirements and visual inspection exceptions criteria. Structural steel. Three, workmanship requirements and visual inspection exceptions criteria. Pipeline. Four, pressure piping. Five, procedure qualification. And six, performance qualification. So if you notice, clauses two, three, and four are related specifically to a type of product. And then one, five and six are not. Within one, five, and six there are requirements that would apply to clauses two, three, and four. So keep that in mind. And you may even find some information within clauses five and six that change between the application of pressure piping pipeline or structural steel. Right now we're going to look at the workmanship requirements and visual inspection exceptions criteria for structural steel. If you notice it's only two pages, three and four. Shouldn't be too hard to you know, get through. There's some tables, but there's not a whole lot of whole lot of content. Let's jump on down there. The clauses that are in here have paragraphs that are broken down with headings. In any code book, it's probably good to always kind of understand that concept. Realize that when I read this statement here, any discontinuity one inch in length or less need not be repaired and the depth need not be explored. I have to make sure that I understand that the context of that is strictly under mill-induced discontinuities. On this paragraph it's not too bad because I can see right there that it's a subparagraph of 2.1.1. But on some codes it's a little bit harder to follow. There may be page changes where you turn a page and you see some requirement and you think, oh, that applies. Without looking at the, the parent paragraph, you can get in some trouble. So anyway, very first one, 2.1, talks about base metal preparation. That's all these things are about. Length of these discontinuities is the visible long dimension on the cut surface. So everything that's below here applies to everything here, and that applies to the cut surface only. The limits of acceptability in the repair of visually observed cut surfaces discontinuities shall be as follows, and all your exceptions criteria is below. A through D, it gives you certain conditions. You don't have to memorize them, but as you read through them, if you don't understand what they're talking about, you need to kind of get that straight in your head. Feel free to you know, text me, email me, send me a message over the, uh, the welding classroom uh, message system. Make sure that you understand what they mean don't have to memorize them. So 2.2 workmanship requirements. It's not a subparagraph of anything other than structural steel. Talks about weld etch prep surface roughness requirements. Notice that there's exceptions for different types of processes. Weld edge prep surfaces for manual and semi-automatic welding processes shall not be rougher than sample 3. When they're talking about sample 3 it is this plastic cut surface replica AWS C4.177. You'll be provided one of those on your CWI exam. The best way to use it is just run your fingernail across it and compare how that feels to what the item you're inspecting. Mechanized and automatic welding processes, except for sub-arc, shall not be rough for the sample 4. So you notice you have to use a little bit of logic there figuring out what they're talking about. Then there's the allowances for sub-arc. But here's one more condition. Edges of members that are not subject to calculated stress shall not be rougher than sample 2 and shall have no gouges deeper than 8. So this has nothing to do with the process, but it does have something to do with the conditions. 
Now you're not you as an inspector in on your test and in the real code are not the person that decides whether something is subject to calculated stress or not. You'll be given that information or you should get that information from the engineer or the designer. And then here's for all other conditions, all other edges. These conditions here apply and if there's any other situation besides these then 2.2.1.5 applies. Arc strikes. Base metal shall be free of arc strikes. Here's something you can put in your head for all three categories arc strikes are not allowed. They're called something else in the pipeline clause. You need to go look for that. It'll be good for you. Cleaning of completed welds. Slag shall be removed. Spatter is acceptable unless NDT other than visual is to be performed. So for clause 2 applications, spatter is acceptable. Fillet weld terminations and starts. Fillet weld should not be terminated on the corners of lap joints. Means you don't run a bead all the way up to the corner. What you shall do is for statically loaded connections, you can either hold the weld back or you can wrap the weld around the corner. There's distances for how much to hold it back. There's distances for how much to wrap it around the corner. Cyclically loaded connections, wrap the weld around the corner is the only option. So if you have something that's specified as a cyclically loaded connection and your weld replica shows the weld is terminated short, you can't you can't accept that because that's not an option for cyclically loaded connections. Repairs. Removal of weld metal shall be done by machine and grinding shipping. Unacceptable portions of the weld shall be removed without substantial removal of the base metal. I'm not a big fan of the term substantial. I should be good to go on understanding what they're talking about. Surfaces shall be cleaned thoroughly before welding. Weld metal shall be deposited to compensate for any deficiency size in the weld metal. So that kind of gets you through the, gen the general workmanship requirements. The next thing is the visual inspection acceptance criteria. This is 